Morning pig fans, uh, I have replaced myself again with a cake. The reason for that is more of you seem to like cake than like looking at me. I'm not thinking bad about that. Really. You swines. Okay, I want to talk about something Donald Trump said uh, yesterday. He said it twice yesterday and two or three times on Friday in his White House announcements it kind of slipped right under the radar but i think it's it's where we're going next he mentioned on friday a concept that uh just he just slipped straight in and moved on to the next thing and that concept was loan forgiveness now yesterday he he raised a, a question about um about uh, what happens to companies in, in this kind of environment. He was talking about restaurants being shut down, talking about creditors calling in loans, talking about people charging rent for properties that couldn't be used. And he kind of hit on something that I've been saying like, on and off now for three, two, three weeks, that what we need to do here is introduce some extraordinary measures. And those measures are to accept that we're in a, a current state of emergency and to change the rules of what we're doing. Now, I've been saying that what we need to do is uh, close the stock markets, suspend the debt futures markets, and suspend commodities markets. Also, to suspend the charging of rent and the charging of interest and the uh, clawback of capital payments, etc. Just for the period of the emergency. What happened last week is the world's central banks came in and tried to bail out the banks, in essence, by saying, well, we'll lend, we'll lend, we'll lend, we'll lend, and with the idea that the banks will then lend to people who are in need. Well, as you saw last week, the last thing a bank is going to do is lend to anyone who's in need. Even with an 80% government back guarantee, the banks have put their interest rates up on uh, loans from like 6 to 8% on a guaranteed overdraft to 24 25%. Now, that is profiteering... Um, of the standard order. I was going to say the highest order, but it's not the highest order because that is what the free market does. That is what people, given the opportunity, do. They take advantage. They say, well, I'm obviously my risk profile is in, you know, there's a chance you're not going to uh, pay me back. Therefore, I need to charge more interest. Ironically, the more interest you charge me, the more chance there is I'm not going to be able to pay it back. But leaving that one aside. So Donald comes up with this thing and he says, people should be, uh, why should um, lenders be guaranteed? He kind of sideways into it. And I don't think he even saw the impact of what he said, but obviously it's what he's thinking. And I think it's what we're going to need to get to. The idea that if you just allow the creditors to uh, foreclose and charge interest in this period where interest can't be earned, then they have a negative effect on your economy. They are the people shutting down your airlines. The airline, in, in a sense, is not shut down. The airline is closed for a few months while flights can't happen. But the airline could just go into mothballs and then come out in two months the other side. The government have been in. They've been trying to guarantee help for workers and help for people who are laid off. The government is doing everything it can. But the what survives and who survives will be determined by the people with the money. And if you allow the creditors to uh, charge interest, charge higher rates of interest, or foreclose, call in loans, then they are the people destroying the economy. Not coronavirus, not the president. They are the people destroying workers' jobs. Now, on Friday, I think Trump, use the word workers about eight times. Now, this is unthinkable of an American president to be talking about workers. He used this phrase more often than you would expect in a communist broadcast. Now, the reason for that is several fold. He's got to spin into where the worker is because he needs them to support him. But also he could be pointing to something that actually is the genuine thing. You know, you need workers. You need an economy. You need people who know how to make things with hammers and fix things with drills and uh, whatever. You don't just need people who speculate. 
you need people who can cure people when they're ill and things like that. Now he is he's opening the way for him to walk into this area, as far as I can see. I still wouldn't be surprised if they need to shut the stock market down. If you're watching the Nikkei and the Shanghai today, they're not doing well. What is going to happen now is really the numbers are going to start to come out about uh, how bad this situation is. And it is bad. Um, and I, I don't even want to suggest how bad it is because no way through this am I trying to do any scaremongering. I'm just saying it is bad. You will see it's going to get worse. Um, and then what happens is as it gets worse, the price of the stocks will readjust. Now, at the moment, if the stock market comes down. People are going, well, it's just, you know, it's just trying to work out where it is. But if we know roughly where it all is, we know roughly where the virus is. We know what the Bank of England has done. We know what the government's done. We know what legislation has been brought in. And you actively go out and sell shares uh, or as more importantly, if you go out and sell shares that you don't even own, um, in order to spec on the short side, you could then get into a situation which the uh, chairman of the Bank of England talked about last week on Tuesday about um, disorderly markets. At what point does the government, do the, the central banks decide, actually, if the stock market starts to go down again, we can't hold it? And then all that will happen is, what I said last week, you'll get into this credit slide and slump where assets start to fall apart and because you're protecting the lenders, they then start foreclosing and that ends in a spiral where the uh, where the markets and everyone's jobs and the economy just gets trashed in order to protect the lender. So I think what's going to need to have to happen is what I've said all along. You've got to shut the markets. You've got to shut the debt markets You've got to suspend the payment of rent in all forms, rent on houses. Why is the government actually stepping in and basically offering to pay the rent for people? Why don't they just say, look, guys, it's an emergency. I know you own a house or whatever, but like everyone else, you need to join in and sacrifice with everyone else. You know, my, my uh, daughter um, could lose her flat which she can't even live in because someone is in there self-isolating her other partner's self, uh, you know, girl they share the flat with is self-isolating and uh, so she couldn't go up there because she would be at risk of getting coronavirus. She can't use it, but she's still got to pay rent on it. So that means someone who hasn't got a job is uh, is paying money to someone who doesn't have a job a landlord um and they could lose you know she could lose her house and the person who rents the place out just makes money why don't we just say look guys for the next six or eight weeks there's no rent there's no interest there's no capital repayments we shut down the stock market so we're not saying the stock market doesn't exist we're just saying we we don't want in this situation to have people rampantly selling sh shares they don't uh, own or spreading fear or rumours or whatever. So we're going to shut the stock market um, just for a while and then we'll reopen it. Um, and the same with commodity markets. We don't need you going in and buying forward corn. If you're around here, I'm only just watching people managing to get on the ground. The, the bit we had around here, everyone thinks, God, that was a wet period. It started raining here in about July. And it's been consistently wet, so wet that actually what's happened as far as farmers are concerned is not that the, the it's not the rainfall that's the problem, it's the fact that there are no dry days. So up until last Monday, we'd gone something like seven and a half months without three consecutive dry days, which makes it very hard to work the land at a productive rate. We don't want someone saying, well, that's a good reason to buy stuff because, look... Uh, the the yields are going to be down this year. People can't be got to harvest crops or whatever. God, we'll make a killing. Let's just go in and buy this stuff now, and then when it gets to like June, July, when everyone's fucked, we can uh, we can sell it back to them for more money. Okay, um, I'm going to leave you now. I'm, if you see this uh, cheesecake here, Mr. Cheesy, say hello, cheesecake. Hello. Uh, he, he was drinking over the weekend and he fell off his plate and broke his nose. Look. 
That'll learn you. Don't be nasty. Don't be nasty. Right, I'm going to go now. Um, if, if you do want to comment on any of this stuff, you know, you want to put your two penneth worth in, feel free to stick it on the bottom. I might abuse you verbally. There you go. That's part of life. A little bit of the fun of the fair. Ciao for now. Bye.